102.2 Auckland. The Radio Wemo Breakfast. Yes, uh, time to talk games now here on the Ready Wemo Breakfast. Almost everyone has a gaming device in their hands these days, whether they know it or not. Most likely, probably, it's a mobile device, and it's certainly changing the uh, landscape of interactive gaming here in New Zealand and around the world. Well, one organisation that looks at this kind of stuff is the uh, Interactive Game and Entertainment Association, uh, and uh, Ron Curry is the CEO, and he joins us in the Kiwi Studio this morning. Good morning to you, Ron. Yeah, good morning. First up, um, tell us about your organisation and where you fit in the landscape of, of the gaming industry. Okay, we uh, represent the games publishers and distributors in New Zealand. So it's um, it's those companies, Flight, uh, PlayStation, Microsoft, and the local distributors uh, in the market here. Yeah, including game producers, actual makers themselves. So right down. No, to the... there's there's a separate organisation that look after the game developers, but we work obviously very closely with them. But we kind of look at, at one end of the business, and the developers look after the other. Okay, um, and so do you guys also interact w- interact with the uh, mobile device makers as well? Yeah, we're certainly starting to. I mean, traditionally we with a gaming organisation, you know, the, the traditional platforms. Um, we've seen over the last couple of years that the smartphones are really starting to dominate the gaming space. So naturally we have to start moving yeah. into that area as well and talking to those guys. In fact, you brought in a gaming device this morning, uh, <laughs> and some people might not consider it a gaming device. Of course, it's a work, it's a serious device, but the iPad um, as well here in, here in the studio, um, which is more powerful than so the original consoles that, well, that came you know, out. I remember selling Master System that doesn't give away the age too much, you know. And, yeah, I mean, this thing here I carry around as a business tool. I tell my business and my wife yeah, it's a business I'm tool. I'm sure there's angry birds um, on there somewhere. You might be right for <laughs> business purposes only. Um, yeah, it's much more powerful. Yeah. Um, and this is where gaming is going. You know, everyone's um, moving on to mobile, portable devices, smartphones, and we've kind of moved away from that. Well, not moving away, but there's a space for those big, huge, epic games of Call of Duties and Halos, etc. Yeah. But everyone's uh, jumping to those micro moments now. When you you know you got a you know you got ten minutes free, you haven't grabbed a coffee, you're on the bus, you know. Interesting, you call them so micro moments. So what did we used to do with those moments? I, I think in those moments we used to think. I guess we used to <laughs> contemplate. Yeah. You, you know, we used to you know fill it with maybe reading the newspaper. Or there was there was other ways of filling that time. Uh, now we're you know we're either texting or we're um, you know probably playing a game for a couple so of minutes or that, Facebooking. So that is really becoming a habit these days. That um, that at those moments, say waiting at the bus stop or wherever, people will pull out Angry Birds or whatever they have on their phone. Yeah, absolutely. And it, you know, all you need to do is you know I was on a plane coming in last night from uh, from Wellington. You just walk down the aisle and uh, look at the amount of people who've got their their noses buried in a in a smartphone. Yeah, they're clearly they're can't get their email, so they need to do something. True. Do, now, does that mean, though, that the demographics and the type of people who actually game is actually changing? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we've got a much um, broader group of people who are gaming. Gaming's changed. You know, we, we've we seen over, you know, a number of years that game, gaming had to be more and more immersive. You know, the graphics had to be better. The sound had to be great. You know, we all wanted to have 5.1 surround and, yeah. you know, have this awesome game playing against, you know, a thousand other people. Now, all of a sudden, you know, we're very cool to play Angry Birds. Yeah. You know, which is we're going back to what looks like an 8-bit game or a 16-bit game. So that's certainly what we want to engage with well, changing. Well, graphically beautiful, but but very simple in its gameplay, isn't it? It's a very simple idea. And it's gone back to exactly where gaming started. It was that simple idea of having a bit of fun. Yeah. You know, and just enjoying that interaction. Yeah. Um, almost getting back to checkers, really, isn't it? Checkers so, or Pong. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Know, back to what gaming is all about, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and, and so does that, so it's now covering um, a wider group of people. So are we seeing older people getting into gaming? Yeah, we're, and we, we are. And we've seen them get into gaming for a couple of reasons. Uh, firstly, we've seen because they just want to have a bit of fun. Yeah. Um, you know, my mum's on Facebook and you know, she's driving me crazy with all her bejeweled and Farmville requests. But then, you know, we got other older people getting into gaming for health reasons. So completely different reason to why we put the games together. Hmm. But they're using them for the rehab, they're using them for, you know, brain training for you know for a whole number of So the stuff like Nintendo Wii and the Xbox Connect and the PlayStation Move. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a lot of um 
research being done, there's a lot of organisations who are actually using that product or modifying the product um, for use with stroke, stroke victims, for geriatrics, for you know rehabilitation. Is it actually really happening? Because we've heard about the research, we've heard about that, that it's actually a good idea, but is it really being implemented in the real world? It is. You know, we worked with some people with the, from the neuroscience division at, um, in the hospital in Sydney, and we're using some iPad apps and um, Angry Angry Ninja. No. I always get to ninja oh, fruit. The, ninja, yeah, ninja fruit. they're using yeah. that to do rehabilitation simply because it's that hand movement backward and forward, which you need to do as a stroke rehabilitation. Yeah. Now that's a boring exercise, you know, move your hand left to right, right to left. But if you're doing it interacting with a game, it all make, you know makes it a fun activity, and you're achieving the same outcome. It's funny that so, so games like uh, Fruit Ninja are almost a little bit like um, uh, driving tests, aren't they? You know, like you know when you go you go and you do your theory and then you check your eyesight and whatnot, and you've got to respond to um, beeps in front of your eyes. It's just a, a more elaborate version of that. It is, and, and what's fantastic is is these organisations are engaging with with developers and saying this is cool, mm. but it's too fast, mm. or the fruit drops too quickly, or you know whatever. Can you give us some code and you know we'll modify it? And we're seeing some real interaction now with some really smart developers taking their skills and using them outside traditional games. What about the trends in social gaming? Because we did see with the rise of Facebook, the explosion of games like the you know the Mafia one and, and as you say Farmville. Uh, for me and my friends, that's definitely dropped off. I don't see those requests coming through so often anymore. Where, where are we going with that now? Uh, I think it's like a lot of social media. People jump in the deep end and, you know, everybody's doing it. We all want to be on, you know, Facebook. We all want to be on MySpace, you know, and we transition. Yeah. So I think social gaming, it's still here. It's here for a long time. I mean, it's big business, isn't it? It's a huge business. Some of those small companies are now huge and been bought out by the likes of Google and Facebook. Absolutely. And and But it's what they're delivering outside the pure gaming experience. You know, the thing about social gaming is it's connecting a whole bunch of people and a whole bunch of eyeballs are on the screen. Yeah. You know, and it's... That's what sits around that that's worth money as well, yeah. the advertising that sits around so, it. So not only are the users of games, the end consumer of games uh, increased and the demographics widened, but uh, what about also the people at the other end of the market who are getting into creating the games? Is, has that exploded? Is that getting bigger? It's getting bigger, but the business is changing. So now you know, the traditional model was you had a game developer, had an idea, or an idea was brought to them. They created a game, they gave it to a publisher, a publisher did all the heavy lifting as far as the front end goes certainly didn't do the heavy lifting as in creating. Yeah. But now you've got these developers who, developers are publishers and individuals are developers and they're also self-publishing. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's a changing of the whole business landscape for those guys and it's great for them. Yeah. You know, they now own the fruits of their labour. What, what about, um, where are we at with the research of the impacts of gaming on um, individuals, families, society and the economy as a whole? Yeah, look, I, I could probably... You tell me what you want it to say, and I'll find you the research right. that says it. Okay. Yeah. Look, there's there's a lot of evidence that, or some evidence that says violence in media is bad, and that'll talk about all, all media. TV, movies, TV, and games. Yeah. Th- there's you know evidence that says suggests that there's uh, you know immediate impact but no long term impact. There's some that says there's no causative effect between violence and uh, violence in media and and you know violent reaction. Yeah. Um, look, I, I think the research is out. You know, there's nothing conclusive. We've had the same sort of discussion, whether it was from, you know, Penny Arcade books, whether it was comic books. Yeah. You know, colour television was a thing when I was a kid that was going to ruin my life. But games are now matured, you know. We've been around a long, long time. They have. Um, and yet the jury's still out. The jury's still out. There's been no longitudinal studies. Mm. Um, and I guess even though it's been a long, around for a long time, it was ignored for a long time. Mm. You know, it was, a, it was a toy. It was a kid's thing. And so I think the academics for a long time ignored it. They're certainly very active now. You know, there's a lot of interest in, in the whole medium now and the impact on gaming, positive and, and not so positive. Yeah. Well, what are you playing at the moment? What's your, what's your top game? Um, probably at the moment I've only got time for something I can stick on the iPad. Yeah. 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 So ang- prob- probably something like, like Angry Birds. For research purposes, yeah, yes. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's um, fascinating stuff. Um, if you want to know more about the work of um, IGEA, the Interactive Games and and Entertainment Association. Check out IGEA.net. And uh, Ron Curry has been my guest. He's the CEO. Thanks very much for joining us here in the Kiwi Studio. Thank you.